So welcome everyone to the March 31st, 2022 school committee meeting in keeping with an act relative to extending certain COVID measures adopted during the state of emergency as amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2022. This meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meet meeting will be broadcast live on Facebook and recorded on ECAT. This meeting is open to the public and will take questions by the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Please make sure to include your full name and address. We'll do our best to answer questions, all of them. However, we will not uh, read questions that had already been answered. All right. So first up is a whole bunch of minutes. <laughs> the first minutes are from the regular Thursday, February 17th, 2022 meeting. Are there any, oh, maybe I'll give Caroline, it looks like she's tuning in. Let me give her a minute to chime in in case she has edits. Here. Okay. Robot, right. Okay. I'm on the <laughs> okay, no problem. So we're looking at the first set of minutes from February 17th, 2022, regular meeting. Any questions, edits? No? Okay. Can I get a motion to accept those minutes? O'Neill so moved. Star second. All right, roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durance, yes. Ruga, yes. Star, yes. Excellent, thank you. All right, the next minutes are from the regular school committee meeting from Thursday, March 10th, 2022. Are there any questions, comments, edits? All right. Can I get a motion to accept the regular school committee meeting minutes from Thursday, March 10th, 2022? So moved, DeLuca. Can I get a second? Star O'Neil. second. All right. <laughs> Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durance, yes. DeLuca, yes. Star, yes. All right. Thank you. Next set of minutes are from... March 16th, 2022. It's a regular meeting. Any questions, comments, or edits? All right. I get a motion to accept the regular school committee meeting minutes from Wednesday, March 16th, 2022. So move, Star. I get a second. Second, DeLuca. All right. Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durance, yes. DeLuca, yes. Star, yes. All right, thank you. And the last set of minutes are from executive session on Thursday, March 10th, 2022. Does anyone want me to hold them for edits at a later date? All right, can I get a motion to accept the executive session minutes from Thursday, March 10th, 2022, but not release? O'Neill, so moved. Can I get a second? Star second. All right, roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. DeLuca, abstain. Star, yes. All right, thank you. All right, next on the agenda, discussion on possible vote to approve a new exterior sign at RO. Dr. Cabral. Thank you. As I frequently drive into Richardson Olmstead, um, I realize that I, I often reflect about the years it took to combine them into one school. And of course, we're very happy that that's the case. We have that beautiful electronic sign outside that was the result of a student's project that we're very grateful for. But uh, as you approach the school down that long driveway, um, I did notice that it still says Richardson on one side and it says Olmstead on the other and they're beautiful engravings but until you're right on top of the school you really can't see them so i talked to mr getchell and mr twombly about the possibility of putting some lettering because if you look in between the two tall we call them the towers of the of the richardson and olmstead wings in the center there's that concave area above the administrative offices that really gives quite a large space, that would be the perfect place for lettering, which we have, of course, on all of our other buildings. So I have Mr. Getchell and Mr. Twombly here 
this evening to explain to you what they were able to find out through their research and to uh, possibly vote for you to support putting new letters and of course giving your feedback if you were so, so inclined about um, any of the information that they've received that they're gonna provide to you tonight. So Mr. Getchell, Mr. Twombly. Mr. Twombly, you're on mute. Yeah, thank Sorry you. about that. <laughs> so, so I'll just start out really quickly. So we have uh, Albert Bass here from uh, Albert Bass Associates and they're the uh, company that we've been working with on the new uh, lettering or signage for Richardson Olmsted School. Obviously we have uh, Chris Ketchell here because he's the principal of the Richardson Olmsted School. So Chris will kind of give you a little uh, history and some of the background and then we'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Bass who will kind of go over the proposal uh, that we would like to have the school committee actually approve. Uh, we're looking for a possible vote or approval for our, the one that we chose. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris. So Chris, oh, there yeah, you go. thank you. Yeah, thanks, David. Yeah, Alicia said it perfectly, actually. I mean, when you come into RO, once you come down the driveway, there's really no place that it actually says our school name. So when, when new parents or guests come to our school, it just seems like it's still two schools that are confused about which entrance to go into. Um, we have two main entrances. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of work even before I became principal. A lot of work was done on merging these two schools together, and that happened quite some time ago. Um, we, we think it is more than appropriate to have our school name, the Richardson Homestead School, on the school in a center position. Um, I think it would be very symbolic and um, also just functional <laughs> to new people that come to our school. So um, I, I appreciate um, Alicia seeing this so clearly and advocating for it, supporting this. Um, so um, in the the Bass Company has been wonderful to work with. They're Eastern people, they're local, uh, and they've been very professional and prompt in, in, in this work. So um, I'm, I'll turn it over to Al over there, if, if you wouldn't mind just explaining you know, what this would look like and just the details about the letters themselves. Absolutely, thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris, will you be sharing the presentation? Yeah, I'm, just give me a minute, I'll mute myself and I'll, um, Fantastic. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, again, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Albert Bass, and I'm here today representing Albert Bass Associates. Uh, I'm the fourth generation. Uh, my great great grandfather founded uh, Albert Bass Associates out of Boston back in 1928. Uh, as Chris mentioned, we are an Easton family and just located over in Stoughton. So, uh, hop, skipping away. <laughs> um, I'll wait until we're able to get the presentation on the screen. Just uh, we have some visuals that will aid in the presentation. Um, but to talk a little bit about who we are, um, we are, again, we have been in business for over 94 years, uh, providing North America and internationally uh, with a retail point of purchase signs and graphic solutions. Um, we're a commercial printer with a 30,000 square foot facility. And, um, you know, we manage kind of the project from uh, beginning to end. Uh, and a little bit more about the presentation or the project at hand. Uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, the goal of this project is to uh, symbolically show, you know, the, um, the fact that Richardson and Olmsted have been brought together. Um, and we're hoping to achieve that by, you know, creating this visually uh, appealing sign um, at the front that catches your attention and uh, kind of um, is a symbolic meaning to, to the objective we're trying to achieve. And I'll just add that I believe that the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation that you had sent us, we shared that with the school committee. So they do have it in their packets, I believe. Oh, so, fantastic. So you can All kind right. of go over that. I think it's in there. And it's actually coming up now. So. But anyways, okay. they got copies. <laughs> All right, Chris. Sorry about um, that. That's okay. I'm uh, down on slide. Uh, uh, it's going to be the project I had. Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. So, yes, uh, this is what we'll be looking at. Um, we would plan to center mount um, the building lettering uh, in the middle uh, of that picture right there. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind going to the next slide, we have a visual representation of what this would look like. Um, 
obviously uh, this is a large, pretty, pretty large, but um, so the material choices, this is kind of uh, some options we, we presented to Chris and David, and we're looking to present to you here. Um, so the choices are between a cast metal uh, and an injection molded plastic. I actually have both here with me. Um, and I just wanted to, so here at Albert Bass, we are uh, proposing that uh, the town go with the cast metal. Um, we believe this is the appropriate option due to durability and just uh, the product lifetime. Um, here, I'll show you the malleability of the uh, injection molded plastic. Um, while this is, uh, you know, a good option to, we believe that, you know, in here in the Northeast and, you know, what we're trying to achieve with the legacy in the school and the historic of the town of Easton that, you know, this might uh, have a chance of falling off or just not last um, as long as we would really hope to to have it last. Uh, this cast mold, uh, cast metal is uh, really durable, has a very long lifetime. Um, and, you know, this is kind of really what we would recommend going with um, for a project of this, you know, size and, and matter. Um, the more the, the aluminum, uh, so it'll be an inch thick, um, and it will be 12 inches. Uh, the font size will be 12 inches. Um, I'll get, I'll talk more about font size in a minute. Uh, the color, we're looking to match the, uh, bronze that is already in, um, ingrained into the school and the architecture, uh, in the guttering and just in the, the layout of the school already in the build. Um, so we would match that color. Um, it's between the medium bronze and dark bronze. So that would be a detail we would iron out with Chris and David. Um, and then uh, Chris, we wouldn't mind going to the font size. Uh, so we decided to go with the 12 point font, uh, 12 inch font. Uh, here's just a letter visibility chart. Uh, as you can see, 10 inches gets you around 250 feet, 16 gets you about 360. Uh, we felt 12 uh, was a, an appropriate size uh, given the space we're working with. You know, we don't want it to be too much. Uh, we thought it was appropriate. Um, and finally, the, uh, the font we would choose is uh, architectural prismatic. Uh, we think it's a really um, respectable, classy look um, and would go along with the other lettering that are uh, on the high school and um, potentially on the new middle school. Uh, delivery will be, in, uh, we would deliver and install these letters on site um, from the order date that delivery would occur approximately six to eight weeks from the order. And uh, this installation will occur either on a weekend or after the school year. So uh, school will not be interrupted. Um, our team will check with the town for respective permitting and um, everything will be done in a safe manner. We have a professional team of installers that will use, utilize either a scissor lift or a bucket truck to safely and seamlessly install these letters. And additionally, this is included in our quote. And finally, um, these are the prices we came up with that we'd like to present to you all. Um, option one being the cast metal. Uh, that is a quote of 9,200 and Sorry, Chris, it's just a little small, $232.50. The injection molded plastic, $4,987. Uh, but again, um, for a project of this importance, this, this symb symbolism, uh, we really would recommend going with something with a much durable, longer lifetime uh, in this cast metal. Uh, thank you all for your time and happy to answer any questions. Anyone on the school committee have any questions? Nancy? You're on mute. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Very good. Um, what's the guarantee or the lifetime warranty or how, how long will these letters last? What's the guarantee warranty? Yes. So, uh, Albert Bass and our vendor that we would work with to supply this material have a lifetime guarantee, um, especially with this cast molding. We'd, uh, you know, warranty that throughout its lifetime. 
Um, and this one's for Mr. Getchell. Is this coming out of PAC funds or school funds? Where is this money coming from? This is coming from, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Mr. Getchell won't know the line it's coming from um, probably. It's coming from the district maintenance line. Um, we have been fortunate that we have not been putting in a lot of our typical repairs or preventative measures at the three elementary schools because we're obviously moving next year. And so we do have the opportunity to pay for this from that line. Okay, thank you. And just so just as a point of information, you had said Richardson Olmstead was the only school without lettering on it, but actually the middle school and uh, Morrow Hall don't have lettering on it either. So just so you know, but I get what you're saying about coming down the road, but you go and buy that nice sign out front. So, but anyways, it's, it's lovely. Well, we won't be adding letters to Morrow Hall. <laughs> I, I know that. <laughs> but we can certainly look at the middle school. <laughs> the middle school has that lovely sign out front. So that, that, and we don't have a long driveway at the middle school. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Um, sorry, Bass. Jackie? Just to add, I mean, also in the, it, it's really good timing for us because, you know, this is the year of the tiger and with Glenn James coming on, you know, we're doing a lot of work district-wide to become one district, one Eastern, one Eastern Tigers. And so we also, at, at the same time, we have a spirit team of, that's been formed at RO of teachers, um, who are working on rebranding RO to be RO Tigers and a different logo. So this, it all kind of goes with, you know, a, you know, more moving toward a, a more unified district with the onset of land change. Rebranding. Um, thank you. I came in a little late, so I apologize if I missed this. Is there any maintenance with any of this new lettering that would have to be required or something yearly, anything like that? Thank you for the question. Uh, so I believe that kind of speaks to the, you know, the, the material choice you go with. Uh, we believe that if you were to go with the injection molded plastic, there would be a lot more maintenance, the possibility of a storm, uh, even ripping it off the building. Uh, that cast metal is meant to be weathered and withstand high winds and, and you know, storms and temperatures of all variations. Uh, so we wouldn't foresee any problems, but again, we would be happy to uh, service and warranty the product should anything uh, arise. And, and Dr. Cabral, you said this is coming out of the maintenance line. Does maintenance line cover have enough to cover for both options? Uh, no, I think the choice is Oh, I'm sorry. You're saying the more expensive option. Either, oh, yeah. Would it cover either of the yes. options? It would. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. Thank you. Anyone else? Jen? I, I don't have any um, any other questions, but I, I do want to just share that I, I can't imagine putting plastic lettering on a school named after Henry Hobson Richardson. You know, it's 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 a really beautiful building. That's a really um, good and, point. Yeah, yeah, I, I really feel like that would kind of kind of cheapen what is what is a beautiful building that's definitely designed to achieve a certain aesthetic. So I would support going with the more durable, more classic looking um, metal for it looks as well as practicality. Well, I'm thinking plastic probably would fade too. Yeah. Um, all right. Anyone else? All right. Um, would someone like to make a motion to approve the um, new exterior sign at RO and going with the cast metal option, option A? Why has been so moved? Can I get a second? Star second. All right, roll call vote. We oh. lost our line. Okay. <laughs> Do you know yes? Okay, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. All right, thank you. Um, Michelle, can I interrupt for a second? Of course. Okay, I was just thinking while Mr. Getchell is here, it's just, it was on my um, list for school committee notes because he's here right now. Um, is there any update on the Lindley Menard plaque? Yeah, we, we, um, yeah, we were in communication with the Menards all summer and fall. 
and um, due to a variety of reasons, we weren't able to find a time that worked for them to have the ceremony. Um, but we fully intend to move forward when they are ready. They, they have one child that's at a, at a different school that they wanna make sure that their children are present and there. And that was difficult over the summer and fall. They also had a vacation. So we are in communication with them. Um, her garden is there and is almost ready to bloom for the first time, which is exciting. There is a, a tribute blue ball sphere that is that marks the garden. Um, we fully intend to have that ceremony. Um, we're not gonna forget Lily. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you both for presenting that. Thank you. All right. So thank you, next, have a great night. Our next item is the food pantry discussion, um, but I'm going to make a motion to move that to the April 14th agenda as um, Dan Gurman, who is the director of public relations for Eastern Food Pantry was not able to be with us tonight, but he can be with us on the 14th. So I'm looking for a second. Star second. Roll call vote. Oh, Durance, <laughs> yes. Duga, yes. Glassman, yes. Star, yes. It's amazing how one person throws off our entire rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, next up, vote to approve out of state trips. Dr. Cabral. Thank you. These are three small ones. They are recurring ones, but because per policy, we ask for you to vote on any trips that are out of state. So the first is for first graders at Moreau Hall to go to Roger Williams Zoo in Rhode Island on June 8th with a rain date of June 15th. The second trip is the second graders at Parkview to go to the Easton Beach and Exploration, Exploration Center in Newport, Rhode Island on May 23rd and 24th. It will be one half day, one half of the class on one day and the other half of the class on the other day. They won't go for both days. And the third is the kindergarten students at Parkview to the Roger Williams Zoo in Rhode Island on May 26th. Does the um, Parkview have a rain date? Morrow Hall has a rain date. No, we were not given rain dates by Parkview. They may have only been able to secure those or reserve those dates with the, um, with the vendors. Um, and then I have a question. There's a big price difference between the two, both going to the zoo. Do you know why? The moral it, does, it does say that on Morrow Hall, it does say PAC will cover the cost of the transportation. I wonder if the PTA at Parkview couldn't cover that same cost for some reason. Parkview says PTA is covering most of the cost. Right. And and on Morrow Hall, it says PAC will cover the cost of transportation. So what I'm saying is maybe Parkview couldn't do all the train. The transportation is expensive. Yeah, no, I know. That's why I'm asking for clarification. I know. I that was gonna be my same question, Michelle. What's what's the reason for the big price differential? Yeah, that would um that would yeah, it only says most of the cost. So I I can certainly get that information for you, but it would be who paid which percentage. The rest would go uh, to the students. There's a way to, for us to even that out. I mean, it just, I have a hard time mm. telling one school they got to pay $20 a kid and another school $11.95 a kid. Unfortunately, well, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, having been on that, on the, the PAC side of things, um, there was always a strong, there's usually each school. PAC typically has a policy in my experience that they work out um, with the principal about the equitable use of funding among the classes within the school building. So it could be that they're using stuff for other things. Um, and, you know, I know even that when I was at RO, um, 
there, you know, there could be price differences between even within the same grade, um, you know, because they might have might have been covering an additional trip or, or, or a different activity. So I just don't know if that's something that we want to get into the weeds. on. I think it's a good point of information, but I don't know if it's something that we really want to get into the weeds on. I just want to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, they have they have their budgets and and all of that, and that gets voted on by the members of of each respective schools. There's also a you know organization. Between, I'm sorry, Jen. There's yeah, also a difference between a PAC and a and a PTA, and they may have certain bylaws or um, you know they're registered nonprofits. We can't really take funds from one school that one school raises to another. That will be a non-issue going forward because they're, they and they're already in talks about sharing their resources and becoming one pack. Um, but right now, it, it's po it's very possible, and I'm just saying this hypothetically, of course, they do try to coordinate all of their trips. It's very possible that the PTA of one school uh, paid for another trip, and they paid far less for that one, and that's why this one, they didn't have as much money. There are many possible explanations, but this will be the last time you'll hear us talking about the different costs anyway. <laughs> That will um, that will be consolidated once they're in the new school. I just want to be clear. I wasn't suggesting at all taking money from one school to another. Oh, I thought you said about spreading sure the general it out. public knows that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to make sure the general public watching knows that I was not suggesting that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about spreading it out amongst the students of the grade. That was no, my mistake. I was trying to say, could each school find a way to make it the same price? for the same kids going to the same trip, that's all. Yeah, if we were charging or we're in an activity that we were putting together, absolutely we could do that. Um, but because it's being funded by the parent organization group, um, they really have the latitude to do that. And we're very thankful for the funds that they've raised to make these things possible. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? No? All right, do we need to vote on these? I would think individually or no? Do you want us to vote on all three together? Um, you can do them, you can do them separately. I don't know if you'll have a different vote for each one. I just didn't know how it needed to be on the record. I'm sorry? I didn't know how it needed to be recorded on the record. Uh, you can do them separately. Okay. So can I get a motion to approve the Moreau Hall trip on June 8th with a rain date of June 15th to Roger Williams so, Zoo? So move to Luca. Can I get a second? Second, Wiseman. Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Lance, yes. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. All right. Can I get a motion to approve the kindergarten trip from Parkview to Roger Williams Zoo on May 26th? O'Neill, so move. Can I get a second? Wiseman, second. All right, roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. All right, and can I get a motion to approve the second grade trip from Parkview? Um, each going half day, half the class is going on May 23rd, half on the 24th to the Newport, um, Rhode Island, um, Easton Beach and Exploration Center. So move, DeLuca. Can I get a second? Star second. All right, roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. Luke, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. All right, back to you, Dr. Crow. Next item. Yeah, well, you're still on New York trip. It's still a foreign trip or out of state. Oh, trip. that's, that's oh. number six. You did it, it's a separate item. Okay, vote to approve an overnight trip to New York City. Okay, um, Mrs. Michael from the World Language Department is here, as you can see, she's the Easton Middle School uh, language teacher. She will present her proposal to New York City. This is for eighth grade students only, and she will explain the itinerary as well as the cost and answer any questions you may have. Ms. Michael. All right, hi, thanks for having me. Um, so traditionally starting in 2015, I did a New York City French trip to New York City. 
we would go for four days, three nights. Um, my last trip was planned for April 2020, and unfortunately we had to cancel the trip at that point due to COVID, and it's been on pause ever since. Um, so the big question on all of my students' mind this year was, are we going to Quebec? Are we going to Quebec? And given the state of the world at the beginning of the year, and the amount of planning and time that's necessary to put together a trip like that, um, it just didn't seem like this was the year for us to reinstate the large trip up to Canada. So I did want to try to offer my students some sort of alternative. Um, I know they were all really excited about the possibility. So what I came up with was an overnight trip to New York City. Um, and the connection to French is we would be going to see the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway, um, doing a visit to Ellis Island to see the Statue of Liberty, which was a gift from France. We also have on the agenda a trip to a French restaurant and a visit to um, the Empire State Building. So we have three sort of direct French connections on the trip and then the Empire State Building as well. Um, the plan would be that we would leave the middle school early on a Saturday morning, take a bus to New York City. Day one is um, Empire State Building, the Broadway show and the restaurant. And then day two is the visit to Ellis Island. And then we get back to Easton on Sunday evening. I believe the dates are May 20, 20th to the 21st or 21st to the 22nd, whichever is the Saturday to Sunday. Um, 21st. So, thanks, Alicia. Um, so traditionally, this is a trip where families do pay for it. We have two price points on it because the price of the trip does depend on the number of students who sign up. So the, the more expensive cost is $650 per family or per traveler. And that includes the bus, all of the activities, so the Broadway show, the restaurant, entrance to all of the various things that we would do. Um, we would have a tour guide from Forum, which is the tour company that I have used for Quebec and would be using for this trip as well, who is with us the whole time. The bus stays with, with us the whole time. And the lower cost is $582, and that's if we get the maximum number of students to sign up. Um, so far, every time I've run a trip, we've had the maximum number of students sign up and we've been able to run it at the lowest cost. So I anticipate and hope that would be the case again this time. In the trip proposal, I did include Forum's pro, uh, COVID protocol so you can see what the tour company themselves are doing in order to ensure our safety. My understanding is that the school district's requirement is that all participants be fully vaccinated, so we would certainly follow those protocols as well. Um, the plan would be if I get approval, I hold a general interest meeting and see, you know, what kind of interest we have. It's a little bit of a tight timeline, but I feel confident that we can get the trip up and running um, if we do get approved. So happy to answer any questions. Anyone, Nancy? Um, I know the kids were sad about not being able to go to Quebec the last couple of years and this year too. Um, how many chaperones per, uh, per student or students per chaperone? <laughs> right. That's a great question. So um, the ratio that we get with the tour company is one paid for chaperone per eight students. And um, what we do is we have those spots reserved for staff members and teachers from the school. Beyond that, um, if parents wanted to actually, you know, I'm going to pause because I'm not sure if parents are allowed to. I know that that's sort of been changing throughout the year. Um, but if they are, parents can come as paying members. So we, we really reserve those, the one to eight for teachers specifically, just because that feels more comfortable. But then usually we do have parents come along as well. So our, our group numbers are more like four students per adult. Is there a maximum number of students that you can take? There is, and unfortunately it's like, I have 54 eighth graders right now and I think we max out at 40 or something along those lines only because that fills the bus. And then to add a second bus drives the price of the trip back up. Um, so it has been first come first serve and um, I think we max out around 40. You have to do sort of the math to figure out how many seats on the bus versus how many chaperones. But I believe that's, that's where we cap it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? How many kids will be in a room? Um, usually it's three to four students per room um, in the hotel. They do have the option to pay a little bit extra for a double or a single. So if the family wanted to have, you know, their kid in a less crowded room, they do have that option. And then they would be required to, um, responsible for other meals other than the restaurant 
Definitely. Yeah, so usually what we do is we have families at their comfort and leisure bring food to do a sort of send off breakfast in the morning. We always end up with plenty of extra food that comes on the bus with us. So we are always just full of snacks and things to eat on the bus. Then mm -hmm. students are responsible for lunch. I believe the Sunday morning breakfast is covered. I, I would have to double check that. But traditionally, it's dinner and breakfast gets covered and then lunches are on our own. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. And can I get a motion to approve the overnight trip? It's two days, one night, May 21st and 22nd, 2022 to New York. Star, so moved. Can I get a second? DeLuca, second. Roll call vote. Camille, yes. Durance, yes. Luca, yes. Wasman, yes. Star, yes. All right. Thank you. Have a great time. Thanks so much. The students are going to be very excited. Exciting news for class tomorrow. So thank you all so much. Can I just add one thing, Ms. Michael? I just want to note that um, our appreciation for staff for staff that's willing to do this. I know sometimes on face value, if it's you're saying, well, they get to go to New York or they get to go to France or they get to go. And uh, as someone who's taken students on trips, uh, I can tell you as much as we love them, they're not our children or our family. And going to a French restaurant with 40 middle schoolers is, is not how most of our hardworking think about spending their weekend off that really they're not with their children or, or spouses so uh, so without them we can't run these kinds of programs for our kids so you know someone like Ms. Michael who goes to the same place all the time it's not as though she's looking to, to tour the world uh, she's really doing this as a labor of love she doesn't get paid by us for this on her own time. Um, I extend this to all the, the chaperones that do this kind of work, of course. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge that. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, uh, you are going to be sort of the person that I'm focusing on for all of our faculty that do this kind of work. Um, it's a lot of responsibility, a lot of responsibility, and uh, can be stressful. And certainly they're giving up their own time. So I, I just want to point out that this is work for them. And we really thank you. And I know the students thank you for, for really volunteering your time for things like this, just to, to give them this uh, priceless opportunity. Thank you. It's, it is a lot of work. It, for me, definitely is worth it. And so I'm, I'm excited. So thank you so much for your support and your kind words. Thank you. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right. Next up is vote to approve the 2022-2023 schedule for school committee meetings. This is the second reading. I don't know if anyone has any changes they want us to note on the schedule dates. So I just want to say, uh, Michelle, that June 8th, 2023 will be the EEA party. It's always the uh, Thursday after OA's graduation. Not, I know we're voting on something for this year next, but um, it, it shouldn't make a difference, especially where it's starting at six o'clock. But um, just so you know, that that's, that's one well, of the things. I'm wondering if, because later we're going to talk about that same event right. here, so maybe we should entertain moving it to the 15th, to the, either the next week or the 7th, that Wednesday. So the, the only thing, I don't know how June is, I know it feels like, you know, we're in meeting central, like I've already had this you know, last week, I think I must have had, and we all do, we all have meetings, meetings, meetings. So it's almost like, okay, our meetings are on Thursday. So everybody plans their meetings, you know, around hours, that's all. But maybe in June, it won't be so bad. They have a year's notice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I don't know, what are other people's thoughts? Because we're gonna talk about this again for this year. I mean, I don't have a problem moving that date to the Wednesday or I'm looking at a, I prefer not to have it in conflict with that event if we don't have to. It is a, it is a nice event. <laughs> yeah. 
Would anybody be opposed to the seventh? I mean, we can't always change it as we get closer, but at least for now. Could I just, Nancy, it's Caroline. Yes. Um, isn't yes. that event, as you know, I was on the road, so I've just kind of tuned in again because I was thrown off, but um, it's a isn't EA that, event. isn't the EEA event, you know, no, isn't that yeah. usually the, the two hours before the school committee meeting? I mean, I know it's, we've it's, always gone to that event and then we've gone to the school committee meeting and talked absolutely. about how wonderful the event was. <laughs> so it, it actually kind of was a nice pairing. Yeah. yeah, it's always scheduled from three to six. Right. But once, right. It seems like once the presentation, you know, the speech is made, presentations are made, which is usually done by 4.30, quarter of five, people tend, I mean, you know, some people stay, but we Would have to go because we have a meeting. Then, if it's from four to six, just for that night to make that meeting 6.30 sure. and not change I mean, the day? That well, would be Nancy easy. was saying it's three to six, which I had forgotten. She's right. It's usually three to six. And you're right. By about five, everybody's gone anyway. <laughs> I mean, yep. it's pretty much, I mean, I don't mean just school committee members. I mean, most of the attendees are gone. Right. So, yeah. um, and the thing it, that's coming up on the agenda, because our meetings now start at five, because we're on Zoom, this this one for next year is scheduled for six. Um, you know, and it's a couple of hours if people want to go, and and uh, it's, it's a fun day. But it is an EEA event, although they honor, the EEA honors custodians, secretaries, um, central administration, like everybody in the system that's retiring gets honored. It's not just people that belong to the EEA. Right. Where is that event usually held? Eastern Country Club. All right, so I'm wondering if Worst case, it goes to six. People need driving time to get to a meeting. So with 6.30, and if you get out at five, you have time to eat first. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> oh, there's plenty to eat at the EEA event. <laughs> oh, plenty. <perfect>. All right. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I'm fine with either, but I, it has always been a kind of nice pairing of events. We would go to the EEA event, and then we would go to the school committee meeting and talk about the wonderful EEA event. So uh, I, I don't think it's it's really a conflict because it's you have a couple of hours. It's it's really three to six, right? That's what you said, Nancy. I had forgotten yes. it was started yes. at three. So it's it's basically, as I said, most people have left by five. And even if you don't come till four, if you're there a good hour, the all the presentations are done, everything is, you know, all the importance um, the part of the the important part of the event is over. So I, I mean, I'm fine with 630. I just don't, in some ways, it, it just kind of adds, would, would be kind of waiting around then for the meeting. So I don't know. I just know it's worked really well for many years to do both on the same night, but or same evening, but entirely up to everyone else, obviously. Jen, Jackie? I think, um, I think starting at 630, since that's, I think traditionally was when the meetings used to start um i know we uh, yeah i think it was 6 30 pre-covid was generally when we were starting if that if i recall correctly yes yeah because i used to have to get off the train yeah yeah so it was 6 30 <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have made six o'clock um so yeah so i think if we i think maybe just push that one back to 6 30. okay that's give good. ourselves time between the two events is everyone good with that? Fine with me. All right. The eighth, we're going to leave on the eighth. We're just going to change that to the six thirty. Any others? Um, the December. Oh no, I guess not. Oh, all set. I just want to make sure we're not going to miss sleigh ride, you, Nancy. <laughs> uh, is that, on you that one? I know. Isn't it the second Thursday? I mean, yeah, the second Thursday of December. Correct. So the second Thursday of December is December 8th. Oh, then we're good. We're good. If it gets closer, we can always change it. Okay, thank you. Can't, can't miss that. And then right. do we, October, when is, which Thursday is normally the professional status? I, I think this year it was the, it was the ninth, which was the second. 
Hold on. No, that's not. Uh, it was the 14th this year, which was the second Thursday. Um, I have the 14th as oh. Yeah. And we, we, so we had a meeting, we had the professional status and then we had our meeting right after. Um, yes, it was the 14th. Yeah. Okay, so then well, looking the ahead. The first and the third. The so looking ahead, if it's, if it's normally, if it's normally the second Thursday in October, I don't know if it's a traditional set in stone thing, then that would be on a day that we don't have a meeting. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If we would want to align a meeting with the event or if it doesn't really matter, just bringing it up because I know in the past we've coordinated the two. You're right. We've always coordinated it with a school committee meeting again so that we could kind of talk about it at the school committee meeting right afterwards. And we literally just go from one, we walk from one event to the next, um, to this, we'll walk from that event to the school committee meeting um, in the high school. Alicia, Pardon me? I'm asking Alicia if we know if it is definitely the 13th next year. Lynn is, Checking. I can't hear Lynn, but she's saying something to me. Lynn says it's usually in the beginning of October. There's no set date. Okay. So it's really, it's really at your discretion. Okay. So we could keep our meeting on the 6th and just schedule the professional status reception for the 6th to coincide. Okay. Honestly, most districts don't even have this. This is a really nice thing that we have. So you can certainly make it any, any time you'd like. Okay. All right. Any other dates, changes? All right, um, <clears throat> can I get a motion to accept the school committee meeting schedule for 2022-2023 with the one change on June 8th, we're changing the meeting time to 6.30. So move, DeLuca. I get a second? A second, O'Neill. Everyone. <laughs> All right, roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. Lupe, yes. Weisman, yes. Star, yes. Great, thank you. Okay. Discussion of possible vote to change on the June 9th, 2022 meeting, um, possibly to June 8th. And um, Dr. Corral, did you want to talk about it or do you want me to? Um, we, don't, we don't have a conflict. We're fine to do it either day. So Michelle, what like what Jen was saying earlier, somebody about changing the time of that meeting, like instead of being five o'clock, let's make it six thirty. Hopefully, there's not going to be a huge amount on the agenda. <laughs> we always say that, and then it's like, well, well. It, Dr. Cobra, I thought I'm sorry. Were, I thought you had to speak at it on the ninth. Yeah. I I do. So it, there is a conflict that we're trying to resolve. I'm not just changing meetings. No, I'm saying, no, I'm I'm saying I we don't have a conflict on the eighth. It's perfectly fine for us if you'd like to move it. Okay. Right. And then Nancy suggesting we change it to six thirty, or even six o'clock if you want. You know, it's up to you. But you know, is it? I'd say I'd say change the meeting to six thirty. That's my recommendation. You mean instead of changing the day? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. What would you all like to do? I mean, that's fine with me too. That's fine. Change it to 630. Yep. Are you okay with that, Caroline? Oh, sure. Okay. Yes, I think it's basically Dr. Cabral, though, who has to be okay with it, right? <laughs> I can make, we can make anything work. Um, that's fine. You, you're present also as a school committee or you're invited, so. Okay. Okay, so then I will make a motion to change the start time of the June 9th, 2022 meeting from five o'clock to 6.30 to accommodate the EEA um, celebration event. 
Can I get a second? Star second. Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. DeLuca, yes. Star, yes. I don't know, did we hear Jackie? No, she's muted. You're muted. Just thumbs up, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, vote to approve the senior letter. Dr. Cabral? Thank you. We obviously have a new principal this year, and Ms. Kavanaugh is choosing to do the senior letter a little bit differently. She wants to have the senior letter um, separate from the dates. The dates have been provided to you in your um, packet, and the dates are what is uh, the responsibility of the school committee to vote on. So if you have had an opportunity to review that, if you have any questions, uh, if I can't answer them, I will certainly get the answers for you but she's looking for your approval on the senior date so that she can publish it. And then um, she's gonna be having her senior letter be more of a letter with, um, I'm not sure yet if she's gonna do this as an attachment or if she's gonna send it separately, but she wanted to put them all together on a sheet um, like you have before you. Um, Dr. Cabral, on the, is the senior prom June 2nd? Yes, the senior prom is yes, and it's normally in May, but right. we've had some conflicts with yeah. payment and cancellations due to COVID and rolling over funds and things like that. And so they weren't able to get their first choice for that. Okay. Well, um, a question I've had um, from other parents, because we've seen some of these have made their way onto the calendar, which is great. Um, will I imagine the letter will explain some of what appear to be some of the newer um, events, like people are asking, like, what's Oscar night and what's um, uh, some of the rest of them are self-explanatory. But I think I think Oscar night was the question around, you know, what will it be? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. Yep, I'm, I'm sure she plans on sending that information, but I'll make that note that perhaps on the senior event, she puts maybe a line of description um, and I, I will send her that note. Okay, they, great. Jen, they have done Oscar night, but you know that they've done Oscar night before, although you're, you're a parent of a first, first time parent of a senior. But no, done, I've, no, I've had, I've had others come through. And, oh, that's true. Yeah, I don't remember when right. they last did Oscar night. Um, yeah. Maybe it was something and I forgot, but you know, people have asked about that. And I, and um, I love seeing new. the new, it looks like there's some new, like the, the activities and clubs um, have, has, night. Um, it's great. Has the Mr. Easton night happened yet? No. Because that, sometimes they have that in the fall or the, we no, I, uh, I didn't see, not this, not I the think spring. because of COVID, I think they have, I wonder if they're going to, I, I don't see it on this list, but I wonder if they are going to have, well, although I always wonder, I, this, this crosses it's, my mind. It's a little they, gendered. I think they've they decided um, that they they're don't have to Houston. Yeah. No, I, th I think they've actually decided they're moving away from that event. Okay. It's always a fun night, but it's, it's kind of like, where's the girls turn, you know? Okay. Okay. You were talking about what? I couldn't hear what you were saying, Nancy. Which one? I'm sorry, Mr. Easton. Oh it yes. Is, okay. It's oh yes. Well, as some of you know, time. my son was the first Mr. Easton ever. Well, there you go. <laughs> See, been around a long time. Not that it needs to stay, but it was fun. But I, my thing was always like, well, they had Mr. Easton. Why don't they have Miss Easton? Because I Ms. agree with you. It's, ago, it's, it's always been a little. My son raised that question himself many years ago. <laughs> years ago, Mr. Easton got two free tickets to the prom. And I was like, well, what about Miss Easton? He doesn't even get a chance. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, clarifications? All right. Can I get a uh, motion to accept the 
well, we're not a, we're not approving a senior letter because we don't have a letter. Are we right, it's senior dates? dates. Senior dates. Okay, and we can do that even though this says senior letter. Well, traditionally, this we've always called it the senior letter. The senior letter always had the dates in it. You don't need to vote on a on a letter. Uh, what you're really voting on in the senior letter were the dates. So she just extrapolated them from the actual narrative. Okay. All right. Um, then can I get a motion to approve the dates that will be going in the senior letter? Star, so, so moved. Second, DeLuca. Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. Uh, DeLuca, yes. Wiseman, yes. Star, yes. And just yeah. one thing, graduation is at 10 a.m.? Yes. Okay. On Saturday. Yes, at the yes. park. And just a reminder, there was a committee, Ms. Kavanaugh put together a committee um, with various constituents and um, they together made the decision and asked for an earlier start time as well as a date on Saturday and to maintain the site of Frothingham Park. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, all right, thank you. Awesome. All right, next up, COVID update, Dr. Cabral. Thank you. We have seen a slight uptick, but I will turn it over to Mrs. Pruitt who will share our most recent COVID update um, in terms of number of cases with you. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm actually just pulling up the latest numbers. I apologize, I didn't have that ready. Uh, we do, we have seen a slight uptick in numbers. Um, it's just to, for the community to be aware. Um, we do know that not everyone is reporting um, or necessarily testing. However, those that are reporting, we're seeing a slight uptick. So we do have 23 students positive this week um, and four staff members. Um, so just if everyone could be aware and please ensure that you're practicing all of um, the protocols that um, that are necessary. You know, I, I do constantly remind my own children to continue washing their hands thoroughly. We don't want to slack on, on those simple hygiene um, practices. I also just want to remind everyone that those that have opted in for testing um, the, the tests that are going home biweekly, please remember to test your child. We are finding that when a, a test box goes into a backpack, a test box from the previous two weeks is there as well. So um, please remember to utilize those tests. That's what they are there for. Um, and we are not, the testing will be completed in April. Um, we have not heard anything further if um, they, are, they are extending the program. Um, so at this point, we, have, we think that the, the program will be ending from the state. So that's really the update, the only update we have at this time. Um, do you have any questions about that? Questions? Nope. Thank you. All right, public comment. There are no questions at this time. Okay. <laughs> Superintendent notes. Just a couple of things, uh, just a reminder, this is not an event that's open to the public, but I think it is noteworthy. And that is that Senator Walter Timilty will be coming to the Easton Middle School tomorrow. He's meeting with a group of students that uh, represent what's called the 84. Um, the 84 is a smoking and vaping cessation program that is run by students. They have uh, Eileen Gardner, who's the nurse at Easton Middle School, works very closely with them, as does Corinne McCarthy, who's the chair of the PE Health and Wellness Department. They have put together a presentation on some of their projects and initiatives that they will be sharing with the Senator tomorrow. In addition, there's also um, a section of this at Oliver Ames and those students will be coming over to the middle school also to meet with the Senator and show them, uh, show him their work. 
We have noticed from our, our behavior surveys that we've done with high school and middle school that the um, smoking cessation has been extremely successful. We have also found that while there's still a large number of students that are vaping, the number in the high school has gone down uh, considerably. And we really credit the education we've been able to provide because we were seeing a definite uptick in prior surveys. Uh, we've been able to provide education and uh, peer education, which is, as you can imagine, a lot more powerful for adolescents. And this group, it, they are very impressive students. I've met with them a couple of times already. Most recently, I met with a couple of them uh, um, last week. And they are very excited to present to the Senator. And I, I am confident that they will be uh, impressive on him and uh, hopefully he can work legislatively to support their efforts. Um, so we're excited to welcome him tomorrow and have the students present to him. I also had the opportunity to shadow an Oliver Ames student. Unfortunately, I could only do it for half of the day because of my schedule, but I've already requested to do it again a little bit later in the spring. Shadowing is, um, when an adult literally follows around a student all day, we go through the hall, we went through the halls together, we went to, to advisory together. I sat through uh, biology and Latin and focus period, uh, sorry, focus is the middle school, uh, advisory period and social studies. And it was very interesting. Um, I participated in all of the activities. I worked in groups with partners who were students. And it's just a really authentic glimpse of what things are like during the day. They do not put on airs whatsoever. They are real and it is wonderful. So I really enjoyed that. Um, we, a group of teachers at the high school led by Amelia McLaughlin have actually put together a shadowing program. It's something I've been wanting to do for years but never really had the ability to coordinate effectively and Amelia had put this out to the staff and there are actually dozens of teachers uh, who are doing this throughout the school and I, I think I, we always knew we had very attentive and reflective staff but this is just another example. Um, they, they really want to see the day through the eyes of the students. They really want to experience what our kids are experiencing so that they can can improve on the product they offer. And so I give a lot of credit to Amelia, to our colleagues at the high school who are participating, and I thank them for letting me participate as well. And I think the last thing <laughs> for now is that we, Chrissy and I met with the YMCA, their child care providers, and we are one step closer again to our plan of having a daycare for staff children in the new Blanche Ames School that will serve as a lab for our Oliver Ames childcare students. So that is getting closer to fruition. Our partners at the YMCA have been amazing. Uh, we've talked about things like the hiring, the regulations, the facilities. They are actually gonna join us for a tour of the new building to see the spaces in the next couple of weeks. And so we can't thank them enough for, for really being very open-minded with us and, and creating a very unique uh, program to serve both our high school students and uh, a way to assist our staff so that they can be fully present when they're at work, knowing that the children are close and well cared for. And I think that's all I have uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent Noyce. Chrissy. So every few years, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, conducts um, two separate kind of audits for lack of a better way to describe them. The first is called the Tiered Focus Monitoring or the acronym is TFM. Um, that, is, that is formally known as the Coordinated Program Review. That audit, um, it really focuses on laws and procedures. Um, it's an extremely thorough and very comprehensive analysis um, from special education, which is most of the what the review is about. 
um, civil rights and um, our policies and laws regarding our work with English language learners. This, th that um, review, Easton is on schedule to participate in beginning, um, we actually already started the process and are in the process of what's called a self-assessment. Um, those documents are due over the summer. The second review, and I'm sorry, the, the tiered focus monitoring will actually be all of next year where we will be going back and forth with, with the Department of Education. Um, they will be conducting site visits, speaking with parents, um, speaking with students, reviewing uh, records, um, reviewing documents, so forth and so on. It's, it's, an, it's an extremely time consuming um, process and uh, we very are thorough. very thorough. We're embarking on that. The second audit um, that they do is called a district review. This audit is done every few years, um, and you can either be you can either participate in the di the a complete district review or a targeted district review. And we have the pleasure of being a um, of having a targeted district review here in our district um, this year. The Complete district review focuses on um, six standards and the targeted review breaks those standards into three, um, three on one end where they might just look at governance and administrative systems, or they might look at student centered systems. Our targeted review will be focused on student centered systems. The, um, the standards underneath that are curriculum and instruction, assessment and student support. During this time, which is actually next week, we will be having visitors um, in our buildings for three days. They will be conducting observations as um, in all classrooms, as well as uh, uh, having conversations during focus groups. Um, people that are participating in the focus groups have already been identified and have already been communicated with. The focus groups that we, we are not provided with, um, with questions beforehand to share. Um, it's really just to find authentic conversations as well as authentic observations. During the classroom observations, they'll be focusing on emotional support, classroom organization, and instructional support. Um, and really, they'll be in each classroom for approximately 20 minutes, focusing on the major content areas. Um, and this, this these observations and these, this review will not be happening in preschool. It is only in grades K through 12, kindergarten through grade 12. Um, so I wanted you to be aware that, that the, this portion of the review is happening next week. It's happening on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, some of their conversations will be, their focus groups will be done virtually and some will be in person. They're speaking with um, a group of, of um, high school teachers, a group of high school specialist teachers, um, a group of students. They'll be speaking with the middle school teachers and specialist teachers, as well as elementary teachers and specialist teachers. Um, they have a time set for Dr. Cabral, for myself, for Teresa Skinner, um, our director of student services, and they will be speaking with a focus group of parents as well um, and students at the middle school and the high school. So I just wanted the, the committee to be aware they will be providing us with a report. The report will, um, it, it won't state specifically um, specific conversations. It will be a more generalized description of observations that occurred. Um, and that will also, once that report is provided to us, it will be published on DESE's website. Um, and we will also have it on our website as well and will be presented to you as a school committee. So that is my update. Um, we've been working really hard to have all the documents in place. The principals have been amazing as usual to provide me with all the information that's been needed, um, you know, more specific information for what happened in the particular schools. Um, so I thank them for that. Um, and that's all I have. If you have any questions about that process. Jackie. Thank you, Mrs. Pruitt. Um, for the uh, for the focus groups that um, include the parents, how are the parents chosen? That's a great question. So I uh, turn to the superintendent advisory group that um, works with Dr. Cabral. They really wanted a nice representation of the community. So um, since the superintendent advisory group 
is a representation of our community. Um, that is where we, we solicited volunteers. Thank you. And um, they also had a limited number. They asked for five to six parents and we have six parents that will be on it. Caroline? Uh, did they, do you have any specific information? You said they'll be looking for, uh, in these classroom observations, uh, emotional support, instructional support, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, specific information about the kinds of things that they hope to observe? Yes. Yeah, so in, in a document that I did share out to the community, um, it does state the domains and dimensions that they're looking for. Um, so under emotional support in K through three, there are specific things such as a positive climate, a negative climate, um, teacher sensitivity, and regard for student perspectives. Under classroom organization, they're looking for behavior management, productivity, and instructional learning formats. And for instructional support, they're looking for concept development, quality of feedback, and language modeling. And then in the upper elementary dom um, classrooms for emotional support, again, they're looking for positive climate, teacher sensitivity, regard for student perspectives. For classroom organization, they're looking for behavior management, productivity, and negative climate. I'm not sure why that's separated between K through three and, um, or our, our, yeah, K through three classrooms or upper elementary. Um, and then instructional support, they're looking at um, instructional learning formats, content understanding, analysis and inquiry, quality of feedback and instructional dialogue. The secondary classrooms under emotional support, they're looking for a positive climate, teacher sensitivity and regard for student perspectives. For classroom organization, they're looking for behavior management, productivity and negative climate. And under instructional support, they're looking at instructional learning formats, content understanding, analysis and inquiry, quality of feedback and instructional dialogue. And then throughout it all, they're looking for student engagement. Typically we would, typically the department does not have you participate in both at the same time because they're very thorough and exhaustive, uh, but they are a little bit backed up because of COVID. So they have uh, hired a, a, an outside vendor to conduct these and we are participating, they're straddling one another. We're participating in the preparation of one while we're doing the other. So I just wanted to highlight that only because Chrissy is clear about the assistance we've gotten from the principals. It has to be a true team effort and they've been great. Uh, but that all has to get funneled somewhere. And Chrissy and Teresa Skinner have really run point on both of these studies and done a tremendous job of all of the organization involved, the documents that need to be submitted, the notifications, the communication, solicitation of volunteers, making sure the community is aware. There's just so much preparation um, for these visits. And so they have done a tremendous job making sure we've hit every deadline, we've hit every talking point, we've given them everything that they've asked for. Um, so I, I'm very appreciative of their efforts on that. I also wanted to point out that um, the school committee would have been asked to participate as a focus group if we were doing the targeted review that falls under the governance. Um, so governance and administrative systems. So that's where the, the actual school committee falls. If we were doing a, a complete district review or if we were doing a targeted review around governance and administrative systems. However, Jen um, Starr as a um, parent and being on the, um, the superintendent advisory committee will be participating in the focus group. Bright and early. 7.30. 7.30 in the morning <laughs> on a weekday. <laughs> Any other questions? It would be great. I, I, just, I also just wanted to say that, you know, our message to staff is this is not a dog and pony show. This is, you know, we, we do really great things here in Easton and I'm excited to be able to, to, for the, for them to feel confident and show what they do 
because they deserve the credit. And I know I'm confident that the report that we receive from the department will actually display that. Thank you. Um, all right. Was that it, Christy? I don't mean to. That's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I could tell, I could go on, you know me, but I'm going to <laughs> pause right now. <laughs> um, school committee notes. Caroline, do you have anything? Well, I know that we have gotten some communication about um, having a student uh, member uh, kind of attend school committee meetings. Um, and actually, I was going to suggest, Michelle, I know you've been looking into this. Yeah. And um, we actually, when I was first on school committee, we did have a, a student representative for a number of uh, years. And what happened is actually was an elected position at the high school yeah. and they elected, I think it was five kids, but then you had whoever got the most votes was sort of the person who distributed the work. So it was one member attended each meeting, but they were all part of that group. And I will say that quite a bit of time was spent, um, you know, asking the student uh, about their own impressions of um, certainly any kind of programs we were implementing at the high school. Uh, those were high school students. I know that the one of the inquiries you got was about having also middle school students. Um, my personal feeling was that having several from each grade would be a little overwhelming, particularly at any given meeting. I mean, I, the format that we had, and, and it just honestly was just, I think the principal felt that the interest level among students had fallen away after a number of years. So um, it just kind of disappeared, but it certainly was something that was pretty active uh, right after the Education Reform Act was implemented, that was actually part of the act, one of the recommendations. And um, as I said, the, the initial students who were involved were, were really quite um, active and responsive. Anyway, uh, just wanted to give you that little bit. I did happen to see that, that yep. uh, one of the emails and I knew that you were looking into it. So yeah, what I found so far was it would be somebody from the student council and the person that's asking about it, I believe wanted it to, or wanted to inquire if anybody could have that opportunity as opposed to um, a limited select group to only have that opportunity. So that's part of my inquiry. Does it have to be somebody from the student council? Is that the rules? I don't know. Or Michelle, I'm sorry to interrupt, but what do you mean it had to be someone from student council? Because that was not the way it was originally set up. That's what I'm, I'm trying just to not aware. About, Caroline. Yeah. I'm not really prepared to talk about it tonight. So. Okay. No, okay. I just I just wanted to, to mention that I, I'm really happy that you're looking into it. And I do think that it's something that is um, gaining some attention really across the state. Yep. Um, there have been a couple of articles I know in the Globe about an initiative, at least in Boston, to be more inclusive of older students, obviously. Um, so I just uh, wanted to kind of make sure that people knew this was on our radar, along with 10,000 other things. So, Nancy? Um, not to interrupt Caroline's school committee notes, but at the, at the junior high at the time, when they voted for... Um, like class president um, for ninth grade and all that. And then they had the student council votes also, but there was always a vote for student, co student council representative to the school committee. So I do believe it was part of student council. Yeah. I th if I remember That's what correctly. I've read so far. It's been a long time that yeah. it, it happened a long time. It was when, at least when ninth grade was still at the junior high. So it's been a while. I think it was a good idea for you to reach out to MASK, Michelle, and I'm, I'm sure they'll be able to give you some really good guidance on that. My last district, we had a representative. It was great. They were from the student council. Uh, I don't know if that's isolated or if it's more widespread, but certainly MASK would know. Right. Thank you. All right, Caroline, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have a no, that's, that's okay. I just wanted to, to make sure that the people that had been in touch or whatever knew that this was 
certainly on our radar. And you you might have been planning to talk about it yourself, so I apologize if I don't forget. No, I don't have an answer, so it's not really. Okay. I believe you. I believe you responded to the email, Michelle. Right. Yeah, I did. But as far as a general conversation here, mm -hmm. um, it's not an easy answer to find. I I kept looking for a tab. Student. No, you're right. No. You're right, and I'm actually kind of surprised to hear Nancy's um, information about the, the, well, what was then called the junior high, because we didn't have junior high students during that time, that the early time that I had, you know, we had a student representative, but it was always someone from the high school, and literally it was a separate election at the high school. When they had their class officers and their other elections, they voted for student representatives to the school committee, and, you know, five people were elected and then they they rotated the attendance so so that's uh that information that nancy provided is new i guess I, I don't know maybe that was a title that some junior high kids had but i don't think they were attending meetings because i don't think this was implemented until after the education reform act took effect and that was the first year i was on school committee so okay <laughs> i'll i'll stop now <laughs> we can keep looking into. Yeah. And if it is student council, then we're probably looking at maybe implementing it in the fall because they're all about to right. go to summer. Um, okay, thank you, sorry. Um, who would be next? Nancy, do you have anything? Just three quick things. Um, first of all, OA had a speaker this week. Was this the first time this year that a speaker has been brought in for the whole school? Oh, the first time this year. Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Yes, it is. Yeah. But the speak. I what I thought you were going to say is the speaker himself. He has been here multiple times. Oh no! But yes, so what I, the first one this year. What I was getting at, I knew we had a. Not, maybe we didn't approve it, but you had told us at the beginning of the year that the um, advisory they were on days that there would have been a speaker, it was like they, they were moving things around so kids would be joining up. Did that go all right this year? Did oh, yes, that... very well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. And, and, and the speaker was, the kids seemed to like the speaker that, that came this week? Yes, very much. Uh, like okay. I said, I think this is his third time here or his fourth okay. time. Yeah. Okay, good. So it was um, next, inclusion and um, equity, and it, it was very well received. Okay, thank you. Um, we were talking about all the graduation stuff, and um, this week I had been looking up the safe grad night, because usually somebody calls me and says, do you want to donate anything? You know, not personally to me, but they make calls. I think it's a whole different world now since COVID and everything, and nobody, you know, it's all media. But anyway, I just wanted to put out there, if anybody's interested in, um, you know, donating gift cards or whatever, they do have a website, um, OA, OA, la, 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 where did I do it? I wrote it down. OA Safe Grad. Uh, if you just go OA Safe Grad night, you, it'll pop up. So anyway, um, and it's June 4th. It's from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. So they're looking for volunteers. They're looking for gifts. Um, I know the kids have to pay money now, which again, we talked about earlier, but I feel bad because it used to be a free thing for the kids. And it, the parent, I mean, whoever puts it together does such an amazing job. Safe grad night. I'm so glad it's back. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing for those, that senior class. Um, and then just one more thing, because. I um, just want to put on everybody's calendar, April 23rd is um, town election day at the high school from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Jackie, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, just one quick thing. So today I met with um, ECAT and Mr. Cedarbaum and Walter Hartley from PMA, our construction company, or our, our, our owner's project manager company, I should say and um, Mr. Twombly, and we discussed putting together a short 10, 15 minute video on the new school, just to kind of show the progress and have um, some kind of clip running at town meeting and on the school and town website so people can see how things are coming along. So we're really excited to do that. We're gonna do that sometime early May. That's it. 
that's exciting. The changes are just from week to week are just mind boggling, which I'm sure will lead into Jen. <laughs> you yes. yes, so um, just kind of flipping through my calendar and notes and wow, it's been a very busy three weeks since we last met. So, um, so I was able to go on a tour of the school yesterday, of the Blanche Ames School yesterday. And um, one of the five students, I think it was a group of five students, um, most from the class of 2021, but somebody who's still at OA um, had um, contributed some design ideas that were incorporated into the final design of the school. So one of those students, Anna Gaylor, was home on her spring break this week and accompanied me on a tour of the school. And we both just walked around mouths agape <laughs> going, I just, it's, it's, I can't believe how much space there is. I can't believe how much light there is. Like, you know, every, so many details. It's so much to absorb. Um, it's really, really, really amazing. And I just, I can't wait. Jackie, I'm really glad that that, you know, that update is going to be made. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, speaking to Mr. Cedarbaum yesterday, it sounds like there'll be opportunities, um, it, you know, a, a little bit further down the road for more staff to be able to get in. And I just can't wait for more people to get in and see and get really excited because the space that our kids and our staff are going to have is just like transformational in terms of what they'll be able to do. So that was really fantastic. And I just uh, thank you for, you know, Jackie was there and, and you know, um, to uh, everybody for allowing us to come in um, and do those tours. It was, it was really, really something special. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, it's been a really busy few weeks. Um, so I think bef when we last met, um, we uh, had not yet had a basketball state championship in the girls team. So I'm sure everybody knows by now that happened. So congratulations to the girls um, and to their coaches and um, especially um, Coach Holbrook's retirement. So and I'm sure we'll talk about that more um, in the future. But that the announcement was really there's been some great articles um, that have come out and announcements. Um, but um, not Can I just say one thing. Sure. Uh, she's retiring as basketball coach. Yes. Okay. <laughs> teaching yes just to make sure we don't set off any panic attacks yes <laughs> mine included <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep yep um and then uh so if I, I hope i don't leave anybody out these are the things that have made their way up to my radar so if i it, it inadvertently leave anybody out i apologize but i know um in music they've had quite a few events um Panache and Image, the middle school and high school show choirs competed in the New England Show Choir Showdown a few weeks ago, and Panache finished third place in their division. And the pit band won um, best pit band for the competition, which is fantastic. Um, uh, uh, several musicians participated in the Senior Semspa weekend um, a couple of weekends ago, and last weekend, the OA Jazz Band won a gold medal at the MAJE um, competition and will be performing in a showcase at the Hat Shell on Sunday, May 15th. And there were four students um, of the band who were awarded, who were recognized for outstanding musicians, music, musicianship. Um, let's see. The, uh, the middle school has a, um, the middle school has a, the middle school has players who play in a hockey program. Um, through the Foxborough Sports Center, and those kids won their championship a couple of weeks ago. So congratulations to uh, our youngest hockey players. We look forward to seeing you come up to the high school. Spring sports have started, so good luck to all of the athletes who are starting their spring seasons. And um, Human Rights Committee tonight, starting in one minute, is offering an implicit bias um, webinar. So um, people can probably maybe still go out and register for that um, through Eventbrite if you just go look for um, Eastern Human Rights Committee workshop. So we thank them for bringing that kind of valuable education into town, I think. Oh, and Dr. Cabral, my one of my kids was um, in a class that you shadowed, and <laughs> that was oh. like the highlight of the week was that you were coming. <laughs> well, they didn't, he didn't identify himself. That's no. <laughs> bad. I no. like that heads up, I would have no. identified him. <laughs> He did say, he did come home and say, I participated more in social studies today than I have in a long time because Dr. Cabral was there. 
Uh oh, maybe we're in the same. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you, could, you, were, I, you were a very welcome presence for them. Not take my teacher hat off. I had to really get into those groups and participate. <laughs> That's great. That's it. Alrighty. Um. So just looking super quick. Our next meeting is April 14th at five o'clock. So everyone have that same same date. All right. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session and not to return to open session for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to um, litigation and bargaining in pursuant of MGLC 30A, 21A2 to conduct contract negotiations with the superintendent. Do I have a second? Westman second. Roll call vote. O'Neill, yes. Durant, yes. Deluca, yes. Westman, yes. Star, yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you on the 14th.